Welcome to episode two of Kevin Across America. This week we are in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond is the state capital. There appear to be more solid restaurants here than there are days of the year. And two former U.S. presidents are buried in this city. This is Richmond, Virginia. Richmond is centered on Capitol Square, so it makes sense to start there. In addition to the state capitol, the square is home to the governor's mansion, several monuments, and other state government buildings. Top middle chair there is, uh, is the Speaker of the House of Delegates. Tour guide Bob Swisher told me that up until a 2004 renovation, this was the smallest working state capitol in the U.S. Thomas Jefferson designed it based on Roman temple architecture. That was pretty cutting edge back in the 1780s. In fact, this is the original model shipped from Paris all those years ago. Swisher called this one of the most valuable pieces of marble in the world. It's a statue of George Washington, the only one made during his life, and it stands in the Capitol Rotunda. And Ludon was the greatest sculptor of his era in Europe in the 18th century. And he actually came from France to Virginia. He stayed with Washington at his home. Mount Vernon for two weeks where he measured for this statue. These complimentary capital tours run seven days a week. A short 10 minute walk away is Main Street Station. It's 120 years old. In the 70s and 80s, it survived a flood and two fires. A few Amtrak trains service this station each day, but it's arguably become more of an event space. The station was closed Saturday afternoon because of a wedding, so I had to come back Sunday to check it out. Next up, Maymont. This free public park was once the estate of a wealthy Richmond lawyer and his wife. After their deaths, the couple left their stone mansion and sprawling gardens to the people of Richmond. A waterfall leads you to the Japanese garden. It has a variety of bridges that, according to the signage, encourages guests to slow their pace. The Italian garden is really nice, too. I spotted a few butterflies there. Maymont also has a petting zoo and nature center. I couldn't spot the black bears or bald eagles, but did see two cows and three bison. Maymont is open seven days a week from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m., which gives you a lot of flexibility to see it. Hollywood Cemetery sits above the banks of the James River and spans 135 acres. Unlike many flat city cemeteries, Hollywood has rolling hills and so many trees that it's a registered arboretum. But what draws most people to the cemetery is the fact two former U.S. presidents are buried here. James Monroe, the fifth president, and John Tyler, the tenth president. At Monroe's gravesite, I learned 17 U.S. counties are named after him, and Monrovia, Liberia is the only national capital, aside from Washington, D.C., named after a U.S. president. As for President Tyler, he had 15 kids and helped annex Texas, hence the city Tyler, Texas. The Belle Isle Suspension Bridge takes you to, you guessed it, Belle Isle. The 54-acre public park in the middle of the James River allows people to hike, bike, birdwatch, rock climb, and sunbathe beside these roaring rapids. The Richmond skyline reminds people just how close they are to civilization. This is a path to go to an abandoned hydroelectric building. The Virginia Electric Power Company operated this hydroelectric plant from 1904 up until 1963. The building has a brief cameo in the 2001 movie Hannibal. I climbed inside one of the structures. I'm on the Belle Isle suspension bridge right before sunset. The skyline, the river, just an absolutely beautiful sight. After sunset, I went right up a hill to the Virginia War Memorial. The museum was closed, but the outdoor space is always open. There, the names of around 12,000 Virginians killed in action are engraved on huge sheets of glass and stone walls. An eternal flame 
sits below a 22-foot-tall statue of a woman in grief. Before bed, I checked out the Vale Brewing Company in Scott's Edition. This industrial neighborhood is now full of breweries, each with its own character and charm. Vale is dimly lit with hunting wall mounts, an outdoor gathering area, and an eclectic array of drinks. Bud Light, not on this menu. For lunch Saturday, I stopped into Garnett's in the Fan District neighborhood. I ordered the Point Guard sandwich, turkey, bacon, Swiss, pickled jalapeno, caramelized onions, and mayo. It came with a side of potato salad, which had red onions and capers. The banana pudding was also to kill for. Wow, so that was everything I could have hoped for. Garnett's has a 4.8 on Google with more than 400 reviews. Definitely check them out. For lunch Sunday, I had planned to go to Pearlie's, a Jewish deli institution that I've been to before. Pearlie's, however, was closed for deep cleaning. Whatever that means. A plan B Google search led me to Millie's Diner in the Churchill neighborhood. It's very comfortable for people to come in and everyone's a friend. Kind of like the cheers approach, you know. I mean, Owner Paul Keevil opened the first Millie's in Los Angeles. When he moved to Richmond in the late 80s, he brought Millie's with him. I ordered the devil's mess. It's a staple here. An omelet with curry spices, sausage, eggs and tomatoes, topped with melted cheese, avocado, and sriracha, plus a side of spicy home fries. You know, we're famous for the devil's mess, the veggie mess. The, these are dishes that, because of coming from England and loving Indian food, we have like a unique twist on brunch. For dinner Sunday, I went to Lily Pearl in downtown. It's a southern comfort food spot, and my buttermilk battered fried chicken was off the charts. Corn mash, collard greens, spicy honey, and hot sauce all on the side. Okay, here are a few other cool stops, if you have some extra time. The Egyptian building is on the Virginia Commonwealth University Med School campus in downtown. It's more than 170 years old. In 2014, the Richmond Mural Project set a goal of commissioning more than 100 murals over five years. The idea being that vibrant street art would increase tourism and help businesses thrive. Anyway, there are a lot to check out. It's not the Eiffel Tower or Empire State Building, but there is a free observation deck on the 18th floor of City Hall. It's typically open Monday through Friday during normal business hours, but is currently closed due to COVID. A 10 to 15 minute drive northwest of the Capitol sits Richmond's supposed ugliest structure. A Richmond native designed the Markle Building during the 1960s. A baked potato wrapped in foil inspired his design. So according to the signage here, this ugly building is now home to a CPA, a real estate firm, and also an insurance company. Richmond, in the last five to 10 years, it's on fire. I mean, it's absolutely on fire. Take Paul Keevil's word for it. Richmond is worth a visit. Keevil noted this once sleepy Southern capital city is now hip to the groove a rich blend of the North and South. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and leave a comment below. For now, from Richmond, Virginia, I'm Kevin across America.